One of the measures of relative standing that we have about a distribution is something called a z-score. A z-score tells you the number of standard deviations a number is away from the mean and which direction from the mean it is, whether it's below the mean or above the mean. Now the formula for a z-score is the z-score is equal to the value you are changing minus the mean of the distribution divided by the standard deviation of the distribution. And it's kind of helpful to think of it that way because as we go to different distributions like sampling distributions of the sample mean, um, we need to adjust a little bit for having our distribution that are different than just the distribution of the individual numbers. And again, the z-score tells you the number of standard deviations, the number value is away from the mean. So for example, let's say we have a distribution. with a mean of 52 and we have that the standard deviation of 3. So in a distribution with a mean of 52 and a standard deviation of 3, find the z-score, or sometimes called the standardized score, for, and the first one I want to do is if we have a raw score x equal to 55. Now if we think about this a little bit and we talk about what we had said at the beginning about what a z-score means, I see that just with these numbers, that 55 is exactly 3 more than 52, and 3 is our standard deviation for this problem that I have set out. So since 55 is exactly 52 plus 3, it's one standard deviation higher than the mean, and sometimes we say above the mean. So when I change this 55 to its z-score, we should anticipate that we get a z-score of 1. Let's check. Well, our z-score is the number we're changing, 55, minus the mean of the distribution. Our mean of this distribution is 52, divided by the standard deviation of the distribution. And the standard deviation of this distribution is 3. So when I carry out the operations, remember that the length of your fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So if you're going to key this in all at once, you'll want to open parentheses and go 55 minus 52, close your parentheses, divide by 3. But we'll get 3 divided by 3, which is a z-score of 1. And that's exactly what we anticipated, because we saw that 55 was exactly one standard deviation bigger than 52. How about if we're trying to take and change our raw score of 49 and change it to its z-score? So 49 we see is exactly 3 less than 52. So 49 is one standard deviation lower than the mean, and we're anticipating then to get a z-score of negative 1. Let's see if that happens. So z is equal to the number we're changing, 49, minus the mean of the distribution, 52, all divided by the standard deviation of the distribution, 3. Well, 49 subtract 52 is a negative 3, and negative 3 divided by 3 gives me a negative 1. So we see that we do get those values um, like what the z-score is supposed to indicate. Now the values that are from the specific distribution for that problem are called the raw scores, and the values that you get when you change your raw scores to the z-scores, these are called your standardized scores. So the wording could even be in that manner. Now, another thing to kind of visually look at, and just to help us understand how to anticipate values for our z-score, 
is think of having your distribution on a number line and having 52, your mean, being in the middle of the number line for this particular question. If I take 52 and add a standard deviation, that would be 52 plus 3 gives me 55. If I take my mean 52 and add two standard deviations, 2 times 3 is 6, well 52 plus 6 gives me 58. If I take my mean of 52 and add three standard deviations, 52 plus 3 times 3, or 52 plus 9, would give me 61. So I have my mean, I have a number that's one standard deviation above the mean, two standard deviations above the mean, and three standard deviations above the mean. Now well, let's go to the values that are below the mean. If I have my 52 and I subtract a standard deviation of 3, 52 subtract 3 is 49. If I subtract another standard deviation, I would have my, I could just subtract it from here, 49 subtract 3 gives me 46, and then 46 subtract 3 is going to give me my 43. So for my mean, I have values that are 3 standard deviations above the mean to 3 standard deviations below the mean. Now for each of these, if I change those raw scores to z-scores, and z-scores tell me the number of standard deviations the value is away from the mean, if I change the mean to its z-score, I'll get a z-score of zero, because it's right at the mean. We saw that when we changed 55 to its z-score, we got a z-score of 1. When we changed 58 to its z-score, we would see that we would get a z-score of 2. Because 58 is 2 standard deviations above the mean. And 61's z-score would be 3. 49's z-score we saw was negative 1. 46's z-score would be negative 2 and 43's z-score would be negative 3. Now our typical values from a data set will be in the span from negative 2 to 2. Those are normal z-scores that you can anticipate. But if you think about it in this manner, you can also have a good idea of what you should get for a z-score when you're changing a number that doesn't hit right at the standard deviations away from the mean. But notice, numbers that are bigger than the mean have z-scores that are positive, and numbers that are smaller than the mean have z-scores that are negative, and a number that sits right at the mean will have a z-score that is zero.